point we'll be handling the music that starts at measure 43. This is the recapitulation of the piece and goes to the end. Here we have the term come prima given. This means like the beginning, coming back to the beginning. It is not the same term as a tempo. Now as you turn the page, as you go to the last page of music, I hope you have a photocopy of this page so that you have all three pages of the composition out and you don't need to turn your page and have the distraction during your performance. The last page should um, have some of your finest performance and the most passionate expression that you can give uh, with great expression, con gran espressione, play out here. Uh, agitated, uh, a little stringendo, a little bit faster here, lento. There really is a lot of different pushing forward, pulling back in this area of the composition. Now, throughout uh, my videos and throughout uh, music that I played, I often have to indicate alternate fingerings on the instrument. Uh, during my uh, student days, I would use a triangle to indicate an alternate fingering here for the G-flat because that was the most common alternate fingering I used and the triangle represented to me that alternate fingering key that looked a little bit like a triangle near the low F on there. But as I uh, played as a professional, I began to actually need to reserve that triangle for another purpose and here it's a rhythmic purpose. So. Uh, I was showing beats in this uh, Stravinsky's uh, Story of a Soldier, least toward a soldat. Um, each vertical dash here represents um, uh, an eighth note, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then I use the triangle here for where I've got a beat with three components, here three sixteenth notes, then going on to the seven sixteenth, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, was the way I was thinking of, of this. So you can see I needed to reserve the triangle for uh, these complex rhythmic passages. And so as a result, I started to use the upside down A indicating an alternate key. That way I had a unique symbol that could represent my alternate fingerings. Okay, so let's take a look at um, why we need to have the alternate F sharp key down to go up to B flat. Well, B flat key has a thumb engaged here. And if you use the F sharp key here, then you're going to have to leap your thumb over the E key, or what we call the pancake key, uh, giving you uh, not a very smooth connection. So instead, by using the alternate F sharp key, here it is again, it looks like a triangle a little bit. You play this with your uh, little finger, and then at the next note on the B flat, you pr play with the uh, B flat key. So it makes for a much smoother transition. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the octave designations I use here in my video. Um, I use the numbering system that was established by the Acoustical Society of America many decades ago. So it's the common numbering sister, system used by music theorists in the USA. C4 is middle C. Um, each C in this octave designates a, a, a new number. So this low C on bassoon is C2. You go up to the next C is C3. On to the next C is C4, etc. If you need to review uh, or, or uh, learn a little bit more about that, you can see my video here that is on the Connections site, cnx.org. There's a very important sudden piano in measure 57. Uh, we've also had earlier in the music another sudden piano, so uh, you do need to carefully make this up. Here's the music in that section. Well, I really enjoy this uh, hemiola right before the cadenza area here. It's as fiery, 
uh, tempo. Notice the beamings here. He's really bringing out the duples here, the, the way the beat is grouped into patterns of two here. So you need to play this hemiola, this, uh, this play on rhythm, and uh, bring that about. Uh, elsewhere in the music, just a few measures later, in measure 62 to 64, we've got some rhythmic complexities. We have a division or subdivision of the beat into five components, followed then by a triplet, another triplet, and then two notes in half. Um, one of the things I do when I have transitions from one pattern to the next, or subdivisions, trans uh, transitions and subdivisions is I subdivide in my mind if I have the opportunity to do so. So I go from a pattern of five, then I think in my mind three notes during this quarter note in order to set up the triplet following it, the next three notes, again thinking in three, and then following up the next three. I suggest you practice this with a metronome, slowly making sure that you meet each beat and the beats, the, uh, the subdivisions within the beats are divided evenly so that uh, one note is not uh, longer or held uh, beyond other notes. Now we make it to the cadenza and this is a real finger twister here. So I suggest that you practice the cadenza with multiple rhythmic patterns. And I've set up for you six of them. You could go on and create another 20 or 30. But uh, these are some of the common ones that I found helpful. I take a longer note, followed by three notes in a triplet. Da, triplet, da, triplet, da. I uh, reverse that, triplet, da, triplet, da, da, etc. Uh, here's one uh, long followed by two notes, da, 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 and reverse that. And here's one a little more uh, quick, da, followed by four notes, da, 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 da. So imposing those patterns over the notes in the music will really give you some new expertise over this pattern. <laughs> Well, let's get to a little more conversation about flicking. Um, many people don't think about flicking on bassoon, the E flat fours in the music, but it really is quite helpful in these places where you slur down from the higher register to the E flat four to flick the C sharp key. So I encourage you in that section to use that as your flick key. Now here's a figure of the standard flick keys. Uh, typically, this is the D flick, B flat, B, C, and the A and the B flat. Um, I've spoken elsewhere a little bit about flicking, and you might want to look um, at other videos or other articles on that if you don't uh, have, I'm not familiar with the venting or flicking technique on the bassoon. Well, last of all, we get to that very difficult slur at the end of this movement. And... Um, Sol Schoenbach writes about that in his article that uh, he had great difficulty in his recording session with Osborne, and Osborne insisted that there be a slur and it not be tongued at all. So my solution is, is perhaps unique in that I use a harmonic fingering for E flat 3. Now in the article I wrote on the Osborne Rhapsody, this is the fingering I recommended. Uh, you play a low D and you vent or half hole this first hole here. You might even want to leave it off altogether. Uh, it's a little better in tune with the half hole, however. Uh, however, a student of mine, Joe Thornburg, Thornburg, had an even better solution, and that was to leave this hole open altogether, the hole that is covered by the left hand third finger. So that's uh, what I use in, in this video, and um, obviously the low E flat is then uh, e flat 2 is then with the normal fingering. Now I wished in this uh, recording that I'd played that last E flat a little bit flatter. It sounds a little bit sharp to my ear, but here is that ending passage again.
Well, one of my most treasured possessions is this needlepoint that my mother made when she was in taking all of the kids to music lessons. And uh, she was faithfully ferreted around for music lessons for year after year after year. So on this you see the piano keyboard. We all studied, uh, all four children studied piano. Uh, the bassoon is obviously there for me. And uh, my siblings uh, uh, studied uh, string instruments. So you had one, one brother studied violin, another studied cello. My sister studied uh, violin as well as harp later on. Uh, when I'm looking at this needlepoint, I'm just reminded how, you know, my mother carefully stitched a beautiful pattern into this. And in much the same way, I see God working in our lives. He can stitch a beautiful pattern into your life. If you submit yourself to him, you allow him to work in your life. So I encourage you to do that. Let him make a beautiful needlepoint out of your life. Turn to him, and I think you will just be uh, gloriously uh, thrilled with what he does in your life. God bless you.